Welcome to the Invisible Radio and today's episode of the Invisible Mansion. Our story begins on a dark, stormy night in the hills of Hollywood, California. In the distance is a mansion, broken and decaying from careless neglect. An entourage of cars driven by Jerry Russo, a struggling Italian actor from New York, and Peter Brewer, a technological genius who works on all the behind-the-scenes aspects of movies. They pull into a circular drive of the mansion. People begin pouring out of the vehicles to escape the onslaught of raindrops. Among them are the beautiful, inspiring actress, Karen Bates, and her boyfriend, Josh Garrett, who is a lineman at the University of Southern California. Others in the vehicles are Richard Johnson, who is very... Mysterious. Stacy Bennett, a friend of Karen, that is a bit less attractive. Bob Barry, a Jamaican immigrant who came to study and party in California, most likely the latter of the two. And the original Invisible Corporation's crew, including Chaos, Dave, Damien Dragon, and James Adam too. The group makes their way inside the quiet abode. All is calm for a moment. Oh my god, oh my god, I can't see. No, really. You sure didn't leave your shades on? Maybe I did. Ow! It is night time. Look, Mr. Smarty Guy, anyone can tell that. I thought you were the smart one. I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure the power just went out due to the storm. It's be back on in moments. See? We're all okay. There's a generator. Rat, I like the dark. I was about to have some fun. Ew, you're such a creep. You are all scared of nothing. A little dark never hurt anybody. Oh, but it does. The party stands in the foyer, unaware of the danger that lurks deep within. Now, we have a problem. Nah, we just have to get to the generator and turn it back on. Come on, Tui, give me a hand. Right, um... Chaos? Could you come help? Yeah, sure. You guys stay here while we get this sorted. The trio begin moving out of the foyer and down into the hallway behind the grand staircase. Just hurry! <laughs> Why? You scared of the dark, Karen? No, but like, how are people supposed to look at me if they can't see me? <laughs> you can see playing in the dark. Ew, you're such a perv! Karen's right, you're just being creepy. Damien, Tui, and Chaos make their way down the hallway and begin their search for the generator. Right. Where the hell? Is the generator. Tui, language. This is a Christian Minecraft server. <laughs> oh, wow, chaos. We'll probably find the generator in the basement. The trio make their way down the long hallway led by the light of their phones. At the end of the hall, they find a set of stairs leading to a damp, cobblestone basement. Um, I'll just wait here while you guys turn the generator on. Sure, Tui. Damien and Chaos make their way to the corner of the room, where they find a small generator. Chaos scans the machine, looking for the breaker switch. There's the breaker, Damien. Turn it on. Damien lifts the breaker level on the side of the generator. Nothing happens. Then slowly, the generator begins to turn on, and the power with it. Good. Let's get back to the group. The trio makes their way back to the foyer, to join the rest of the group. Thanks guys, turn the, the power back on. It's no problem, really. Anything for you, ladies. Wow, Tui. What? Huh? Whatever, can we see if there's some, like, food or something? I wonder if there are any Jaffa cakes. Is that all you ever think about? What else will I be thinking about? The party makes their way to the east wing of the house where the kitchen is. The group decides to check various cabinets in search of something to consume. Chaos grabs a glass from the cabinet and heads for the sink. Like, what are you doing? I'm getting a glass of water. Ugh, from the sink? Yeah? Ew, that water's nasty! Water is water, people. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Coach always has our coolers filled from a hose. Well, I guess that might be a bit better. What is wrong with you people? First you're afraid of the dark, now you're afraid of water. Sometimes you just gotta take your lumps on as they come to you. I wonder if there are brownies anywhere. I sure would like some brownies, know what I'm saying? But God sakes man, not those kinds of brownies. I'll have some of those brownies, mom. 
Stacy finds a box of delicious snacks known as Jaffa Cakes. Like, what are those? <laughs> Lamau. Jaffa Cakes! Tuvi, overcome with the desire only for snacks he has come to survive by, runs to the box devouring Jaffa Cake after Jaffa Cake. Get a hold of yourself, man! Get a hold of yourself, mom! Um... The box is in pieces. Tui realizes he's just consumed the entire box of Jaffa Cakes. Except one. Tui reaches ever so slowly for the remaining Jaffa Cake. I thought you were trying to lose weight. I am. But that's so damn good! The group, half in shock by what just occurred, the other half defeated, leaves Tui to consume the final Jaffa Cake. That Jaffa tasted funny. Tui, you're just a fussy eater. Well, well, you're not wrong. The group continues their investigation, looking for snacks. Everyone realizes that Tui's stomach is the one that's grumbling. I told you not to eat all of those. Just, just a bit of indigestion. If only it was. Maybe you're right. I don't feel so. Tui collapses on the floor. Tui? There is no response. Tui's body begins to convulse on the ground, his mouth beginning to foam. Chewy? This is bad. Is he okay? Compulsion stop. Chaos reaches for Chewy's neck, searching for a pulse. Like his chance with women, there is none. He's gone. <laughs> Tears are mostly shed by Chaos, Damien, and Dave, but Stacy seems the most distraught. Both Carrot and Stacy shield themselves in Garrett's arms. The rest of the group seems to serve, but not truly sad. Done in. But the thing he loved the most. <laughs> What could have caused such a catastrophe? Is this just some ironic coincidence? Or is there something... Darker going on? Find out in the next episode of The Invisible Mansion.